Hello, my name is Jimmy, and this is the 2023 Mazda CX-5. And what you have to know for the 2023 model year is this, the new white paint, rhodium white. Gone is a snowflake white pearl. This rhodium white is a $350 option, but it's absolutely stunning. Here's what Mazda has to say about it. It's a pure white inspired by Japanese aesthetics, finding beauty in simplicity. The paint's fine grain accentuates the shadows on the surface of the vehicle complementing the CX-5's sculpted body line. Mazda believes that color is a critical part of the vehicle design. It accentuates the vehicle dynamics and delicate expression while complementing the Kodo, Soul of Motion design theme, something Mazda takes great pride in offering its customers. Obviously, that's Mazda's marketing lingo, but like I said, it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? There's I mean, I'm a sucker for white cars, to be very honest with you, but this one, it does look good. But let me tell you everything that you need to know about the CX-5 here. We'll start with the looks. There's nothing new for the 2023 front end. It's exactly the same as 2022. So you got Mazda's signature headlamps on the front. They were redesigned last year. They look great. You got that chrome surround for the grille. Missing are the fog lamps, but honestly, they didn't do all that much anyways. And it cleans up that front bumper really really nice on the side here because this is the top signature trim i do get body color moldings here on the side and that does differ depending on trim base trims get just plain black plastic and if you get the sporty trim the gt as known as the us and sport here in canada that's glossy black you do also get the glossy black wheels if you get that sport trim but here i got 19 inch and this kind of gray and, and in my eyes i actually really like the gray on the white just looks good it's a little bit more classy you do get proximity door locks on the front door so you can't lock and unlock but you can't do that on the rear sadly they didn't add that but the rear doors almost open at 90 degrees allowing ingress quite easy as for the back end it's the same cx5 that we come to love sloped rear end beautiful led tail lamps and that's really it the cx5 has aged quite a bit the update that it received did just get some of the current Mazda looks right the front headlamps and the tail lamps but when the new generation of Mazda products comes out that CX-90 this is going to look quite dated but I think for now that's totally fine in like four or five years hmm, then it's definitely a little bit older but if we open up the trunk here you get 29.1 cubic feet of space which really isn't all that bad Something that I do like about this tunnel cover is just, well, it sticks to the trunk. So even when you open up the trunk, it's not in your face. It's not in the way. I love this. And it's mesh here, so you can still see in front of the vehicle. So you're not just completely blocked. This is actually very, very smart. And if you don't need it, you can take it out and actually put it underneath the floor as well. And if you're using like this, you can just lower the floor a little bit more to get a little bit more space. The rear seats, you can fold them 40, 20, 40. And you can do that from the back here. So you just pull the lever on the side, 40, 20, 40, then it's folded down. Obviously my front seats have to move forward just a little bit, but it's, well, it's everything that you need back here. Minus, well, grocery hooks. That's the only thing that it's missing. But let's check out those rear seats. All right, the rear seats of the CX-5. I'm 5'11 and I got plenty of headroom because Unlike the CX-50, this has a regular roof line, so headroom is great. Legroom is a little limited. This seat in front is adjusted for me. A little bit more stretched out at 5'11", but I'm still pretty comfortable in here. I got vents in the center. I got heated seats and USB charge points. The only thing is, if there was a person sitting here, you won't get access to any of that as it's well integrated within that armrest. So that is a small problem, but I guess you can still plug in all your USB ports and have all those cords running out through the side. It's, it's a good place to be back here. There's really no faults whatsoever. As I am a child passenger safety technician here in Canada, I just wanted to show you how car seats would fit. On the driver's side, here's a Kleck Link. This is an infant seat and it fits perfectly. Thanks to those doors that open 90 degrees, getting the infant seat in and out was quite easy. As for the fimph here on the passenger side, this is a rear facing passenger seat. Once again, no problems fitting the seat in. It was a little tight for the front occupant, but that's really it. No problems fitting the seats themselves in the rear here. 
In terms of lower anchors, there's one on the driver's side and one on the passenger's side. They're just in between this slit here within the seat. They can be a little bit difficult to install, but I mean, you're gonna install it maybe once or twice and that's really it. So honestly, I don't think it's too bad. And you get three upper anchors behind the bench and those are very easy to access. But let's head to the front. All right, the front seats here of the CX-5. As this is the signature trim, this is the Nappa leather option. And it's just, it's supple and soft. It's just creamy as of leather. I love it. The seats themselves, they are heated and cooled, which is great. The only thing is, if you're a little bit taller, you might not get all the thigh support you might want. But it's actually a little bit better than the CX-50 seat, personally. Because the CX-50, you get the stripe down the center, which sometimes you feel. And it's a little annoying. This, well, it's just supple and soft. Like I said, it's, it's a great seat. I really, really like this. In front of me, I got my traditional Mazda steering wheel. It's the older type compared to the Mazda 3, CX-30, and the 50. But you still got all the controls that you need. You get flappy paddles on the back as well. And like all Mazda products, it is heated, but only on the side. Not the top, not the bottom. Which might make some people a little angry, but... If you're driving normally, it should be fine. Behind that, you got your split analog and digital cluster. Digital screen in the center to show you your speed and a little bit more. Honestly, fine. It could be better, it could have more things, but it doesn't have all the pizzazz that some others kind of give you. But this is fine for a cluster. It shows you what you need. Same thing with the heads-up display. Speed, speed limit, turn-by-turn -turn navigation. That's really it. Nothing more to kind of, you know, get you away from driving. That whole sense, well, same thing with the infotainment. It's not a touchscreen. Everything goes through this kind of rotary controller. It's very similar to like BMW's iDrive. Personally, you get used to it, then it's fine. At first, it can be a little annoying, especially like in CarPlay where it's just designed to be touched. Unlike the CX-50, even at a standstill, you're not able to touch the screen. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna do anything because it's not a touch screen mobile device. You still have to 100% either use the rotary knob or you can use like Siri or Google Assistant. But it just works the way that you want it to. It's, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but I have no problems with it. Overall, the interior, it's actually it's just a really nice place to be. Sure, it's a little dated, but Everything that you touch is supple, it's soft. And the wood that's in here, it's actually really, really nice. And all the touch points are nice. And every single rotary knob that you, well, turn, it has a satisfying click to them. It has a more premium feel than the Mazda name suggests. And that's definitely a good thing. Before we head on the road, let's talk about powertrain. You get two options. The base is a two and a half liter four cylinder. That makes 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. And now it all comes with cylinder deactivation. This being the signature trim, I get the turbo engine in here. That makes 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. If you put premium fuel, it does bump that to 256 and 320. And with all of that power, well, the CX-5 delivers really good performance and effortless acceleration. <laughs> Does globs of torque as you, well, accelerate. And what's nice is, yes, it's a six-speed automatic. In this day and age, quite old and archaic, but because there's only six gears, it doesn't hunt. It doesn't like, hey, I want to go up two gears or down to three gears just to accelerate. It's like maybe down one gear and it just pulls. That's the best part about it. And most Mazda products does this. I think even all Mazda products does this. They tune their throttle really, really well. Like, it's a normal drive mode. There's no eco drive mode. And because of that, when you just give it throttle, it accelerates. There's no delay. Most vehicles, they tune it for that, well, fuel consumption. This doesn't. I mean, I'm averaging horrific fuel consumption right now. 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers. That's pretty bad, considering I think this is rated for 10 liters or so on the uh, in the city. But, I mean, I don't care when I'm having fun, because <laughs> I can just accelerate whenever I want, and it really pushes you back in your seat. 
I love it. It actually sounds decent as well. It's a good sounding little 2.4. It's not too trashy or anything like that. It's a more premium sounding four cylinder as much as a four cylinder can sound. And it's so much more than power. It's just the way that it drives, the way that it handles, the way that it feels. The steering is so accurate. I feel like the CX-50 is a little bit better in terms of just the feel of it and just I'm able to point it exactly where I want, but this is this is really, really good. For just a economy SUV, this is terrific. And because the CX-5 is the older architecture, I do have a multi-link rear suspension. And I find that when I have five people in here, it's more comfortable than the CX-50. That's definitely something that the newer generation suspension doesn't really have, that torsion beam suspension. The multi-link, it's just fundamentally better. Mazda does really good work, but this, just fundamentally, it's better. At 44,000 Canadian dollars, it's not like it's the cheapest vehicle on the market, but it's also not the most expensive. So it delivers really, really good value, and there's still plenty of people buying it because the CX-5 is Mazda's number one seller. Still, with all the new vehicles that is launching, the CX-5 is still the best seller of them all. It all makes sense. This is the vehicle that people are looking for. This class, it's the right size. It drives great. Sure, it's not the biggest on the inside, but for most families, it's more than sufficient. My best friend has a CX-5. I said this on the last CX-5 video. They have a child similar to, well, in age with mine. He's about two years old and a bit now. And they're absolutely fine in it. More than enough space for them with all the groceries, all that good stuff. And even like myself living with the CX-5, my son, he's in the back, all the groceries behind, absolutely no problems. Sure, it's a little tight if you want to carry more people in here, but honestly, it's not that bad. It's certainly livable. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video and sharing the CX-5 with me. It's probably one of the last CX-5 videos I'm gonna do because pretty sure this is gonna get discontinued sooner or later. But until then, let's enjoy what we have. Take care.